A while ago we've pushed the limits of this Arduino Nano here. By adding four logic ICs we got a stable 320 by 200 monochrome VGA output and simultaneously read out a PS2 keyboard. Looks complicated? Then today's video is for you. We are going to squeeze the very same performance out of a Nano with only a single additional logic chip. Let's go! First we set the low fuse byte of the Nano so we get its 16 MHz internal clock out on pin D8 here. I have already done that with this Nano. If we hook up an LED to D8 and compare its brightness to an LED on 5 volts, we get half the intensity since the clock on D8 is only on half of the time. So that's working. If you are unsure how to set the fuse bytes of your Nano, there's a tutorial in the documentation of this project. And I've also shown it in earlier videos. I'll put a link in the description. I have also moved the library folder OS from my GitHub into the Arduino library standard folder. The library contains some tricky AVR assembly code we'll be using as it is for now. Now let's build the tiny circuitry. We have to wire the Nano's D0 to D7 data outputs to this 74HC166 shift register. The Nano also generates the horizontal and vertical VGA sync pulses and a load signal transferring our VRAM byte into the register. The clock on D8 pumps the serial pixel stream out via Q7 and into the VGA. Let's grab a breadboard and hook things up real quick. Now upload the example sketch Nano type. By now we should have everything we need for a stable VGA output. And as you can see we get a perfectly usable 40 by 25 character display just like back in the 80s. Turns out that our tiny microcontroller is just barely capable of pumping out a data byte in time, that is every 8 clock cycles as required by the VGA timing. This core assembly routine here does the trick. The X register holds a pointer to the current position in VRAM. The ZH register holds the MSB address of a row of character set data in flash memory. The first command loads the character set LSB address by fetching the next character from VRAM. The second load copies the pixel byte from flash memory into the register R21. Now we output the pixel data to our shift register and pull parallel load enable PE low to load the new pixel data into the shift pipeline. By releasing PE the clock will shift out 8 pixels to the VGA monitor. Luckily this adds up to exactly 8 cycles. Now without any additional logic chips I'll hook up my PS2 keyboard. Despite all interrupts and timers of the Nano being used up for the VGA signal generator, the Nano will simultaneously read out our PS2 keyboard. I think it doesn't get more minimalistic. Let's take a look under the hood and see how this is even possible. Here you can see a standard PS2 clock and data signal in blue and red respectively. The clock cycle time is about 80 microseconds and data should ideally be sampled while the clock is low as shown in yellow. But all we can really do is to continuously sample the signals at the end of a VGA scan line at a rate of 32 microseconds as shown by the black dots here. We are sampling fast enough to get at least one sample while clock is low. But we'd have to consider any possible phase shift since the keyboard and the nano are out of sync. Now what if we always remember the prior state of the clock and as soon as we detect a change from high to low we sample our data bit. The beauty is that the data remains stable during the entire time clock is low. Based upon this idea I wrote a little assembler routine and off we go. Let us see how much fun it is to do some coding for this machine. We have the full power of the Arduino C++ IDE at our hands plus these additional global variables and functions provided by the library. Let's fill the screen with random characters and see how that goes. 
With all the stuff the Nano has to do in the background, we still have 1K or 50% of SRAM and 26K or 80% of flash memory at our disposal. I've turned this whole thing into a tiny PCB. Let's play some Tetris on it. Some of you might ask for color now, but remember we barely pumped the monochrome pixel data in time. But by investing another AND gate plus some resistors, we at least can implement 16 row colors. I've included a schematic in my repository in case you are interested. So doesn't this look like a fun little gadget? One last thing I'm itching to try is to have this computer participate in Matt Heffernan's 8-bit battle royale. That is a fun speed shootout for retro 8-bit machines. Matt's idea is to compute a Mandelbrot set in reduced resolution as sort of a common denominator benchmark. I've put a link to his video in the description. Here is the leaderboard, including some DIY systems. And here's my Nano Mandelbrot code. I think it looks really nice and compact in C++. I continuously clear and re-render the screen so that we can do a proper speed measurement over several frames. Let's run the code with a stopwatch in hand. That was 0.75 seconds per frame. I didn't expect that. That's about the same speed as my new minimal 64x4 home computer I've just released. So the Nano, despite of having to generate its own VGA output, has quite some life left in it. What version of the Nano PC do you like best? PCB or breadboard? Monochrome or row color? Let me know in the comments and please consider subscribing if you think I have earned it. Take care. Bye.